Hello and welcome. I am the suit and tie dip and shoe guy and this is a for beginners video. This will be covering or talking about floaters. That is tobacco getting away or out of control in the mouth. Pieces coming off the dip itself and migrating to wherever. So first thing I need to say. All right. Now, I bring this video up because I see it quite often, different places online, newer guys, younger guys being, dude, I got to find something else. I, I, don't, I, I must be doing something wrong. I, I got floaters going on all over the place. Da, 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 da. All right. Here's the thing. All right. Whether you are extremely new to dipping or you have been dipping for 20 plus years, you get floaters. I get floaters. Guys that have been dipping since the 80s get floaters. All right? So new guys that are going, wait a minute though, I never hear them talk about, and that's the difference. Everybody at least from time to time, gets floaters. The difference is people that are more experienced and have a longer time dipping don't talk about it and definitely don't make a big deal about it. Ta -da! So, look, here's the thing. All right, somebody that's new to dipping, it will happen more often too. I mean, you will have larger amounts you will have to get used to keeping control in the mouth, all right? But people that have been dipping for decades still from time to time get floaters. They, they do. I get them. I, now, I haven't been dipping an incredibly long time, but at this point, I'd like to think that I am fairly well-versed and I get them even with my stokers, all right? It happens, and it happens, uh, you know, I have had pouches break or come apart in my mouth, and I've had floaters from pouched products. So if any old guy is telling you, I haven't had floaters since 1978, I'm gonna have to call BS on that, all right? It happens. The difference is for someone like myself, okay? I've been dipping with a couple early on breaks for about a decade. For someone like myself, it's not noteworthy. It's definitely not mention worthy and it's not something I ruminate on, all right? With somebody that's very, very new, you tend to ruminate on whether you're doing something right or not. All right, or you ruminate on how you're doing something or how you're doing it and uh, what am I doing wrong. You may be doing something wrong if you're real new, but you may not be. What I'm trying to get across is that floaters are going to happen to you on your first day and 10 years from now, they very well could be happening on that day too. All right. There are certain ways you can cut down on floaters, control in the mouth, all right, uh, product selection. Certain products are easier to use. The cuts of them cut down on tobacco migrating. But ruminating about, oh, well, uh, 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 I feel some, uh, 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 uh yeah, that, it, it's sort of like back in the day, back in the early 90s when I started smoking cigarettes. You always knew somebody that was just started. I would hope that I didn't do this, but I can't really remember. Maybe I did. But you always knew somebody that just started because when taking a drag, their eyes crossed and they looked at the cherry. Same type of idea if you're ruminating to the point like paranoia is setting in about floaters all right they happen to everybody 
the difference is someone like me, it happening, I just take care of it in my mouth. I don't think about it. It's natural. I, I, with my stokers, I move it all around. And I'm not saying I use different spots when I take a dip. It always goes up front. And I move to a different spot. And then while it's in there, I'll move to another spot sometimes. Sometimes I'll move it two, three times, one dip. I'm not taking it out of my mouth during it. It's not like, you know. So, I when I have it in a far back side position, sometimes I bite down on the stuff like it's chew. I move it from one side to the other over my tongue, like through the middle of my mouth. So, if you are someone that is new and prone to ruminating, identify it as rumination. That is when you start cycling a thought. Like you can't get off a track. Floaters. What's that in my mouth? Is that a floater? What did I do wrong? Do I, and you just keep going in circles. That's rumination. Okay? Or if you're someone that is... Okay, the tobacco needs to be here, and it can't get anywhere else in my mouth. And and it turns into like sort of like a almost OCD phobia thing that there might be tobacco in other places of your mouth. Well, if that's you, then putting shredded tobacco in your mouth in the first place might not be something you want to be doing. It, it just is what it is. And I am someone with OCD. Not about that, obviously, but I sort of understand the mindset. It's not going to be perfect. It's not meant to be perfect, all right? That's why people take different size pinches. That's why people go through cans at different rates. The only way you can sort of normalize the amount you take and have the best chance of keeping it all in one spot with nothing going on is use pouches. But you will, at some point in time, probably sooner than later, have a pouch material fail and you will still have floaters. All right? Doesn't happen often, but it does happen. Okay? Now, I hardly ever use pouches outside of reviews, and in my life, it's happened two or three times to me. So, so product selection. All right, now a longer cut is going to be easier to keep from moving around. And a non-budget dip will have not only a longer cut, but a consistent longer cut. All right. Obviously, if you're new and you're trying to dip fine cut or snuff, again, it sort of is what it is. You chose to do that. You take the risk of, okay? So longer cut of a better quality is the best way to go about it. Now, there's two companies or brands that are really good with this, all right? Now, my Stokers is one, all right? It comes in straight mint Winter green, natural. Those are the long cuts. It does come in fine cut, natural. And at one time, and probably still found in some stores, there is a fine cut winter green, which is only in tubs. But you want to stay with the long cuts because it's about not having migration in the mouth. The stuff is cut long, and you will see it because I am going to be pulling it out of this in a second. But more widespread and easierly, easier, wow, really? And this is why I shouldn't do videos at 1.30 in the morning. More easily obtained is what I was trying to say. Because it's so widespread and the distribution of it is just, it's everywhere. Skull. Skull is a product line of U.S. Smokeless Tobacco Company that is basically engineered and set up for beginners. That That's the deal. The nicotine is lower, so if you're getting bowled over by nicotine, that is a plus. 
but the cut, although not quite as long as the Stoker's, the cut is such that it is ridiculously easy to use, in my opinion, and even for somebody that's new. Now, Copenhagen's long cut, if it is actually a product that has the long cut, is not too bad, and in a way, it, it helps that the Copenhagen products have a higher moisture level. But some of the Copenhagen products that are long cut are actually sort of a medium cut. So, and, and it's not said which is which. They're all labeled as long cut. So you want to stick with Skull, all right? A long cut, okay? There is the original Skull original, which is a fine cut. But besides that, everything is long cut with the exception of pouched products. You want to stick with a Skull long cut product. All right. Yeah, they're not high, terribly high nicotine, but if you're coming off, let's say, smoking cigarettes, it's enough to cover you on that. Okay, it, it, it's enough nicotine. It's more nicotine than you would have in a, a stick, a, a cigarette. All right. So there's nothing wrong with it. They have regular dip flavors. They have a straight. They have a mint, wintergreen, etc. If you want to go lower nicotine with one of the fruit ones. I personally like the peach, all right? I like the cherry, but th there's like no nicotine in it at all. But Skull or Stokers, all right? In lieu of either of those, if you are somewhere in the country where you cannot find Skull, which I, I can't imagine where you would be where that would happen, and there's no Stokers, there are some others that will be easier to use their one-offs though within other product lines, okay? Kodiak Wintergreen, which has very high nicotine, so if that's a problem for you, don't go there. Kodiak Wintergreen, the way it is processed, has a really good cling aspect to it, all right? So Kodiak Wintergreen, if you can tolerate the nicotine, is a pretty easy pinch. Pretty easy in the mouth, okay? Copenhagen Extra Long Cut Natural, which really is basically just a long cut. Extra Long Cut Natural is probably the easiest Copenhagen product that you could use. When you start going below the top tier, again, the Grizzly Wintergreen is going to cost you Copenhagen an extra long cut, depending on where you are, it's going to cost you. Um, Grizzly? Grizzly's dark series, like their dark winter green, dark mint, and their dark select. Their cut is okay, and it, they have a higher moisture level than the regular Grizzly line. So they would probably be the easiest there. Once you get out of that top tier, Copenhagen, Skull, da-da-da, and beyond Stokers, it starts getting sketchy, okay? Budget brands are not, you know, they're not cut right. Or they're cut in a hurried fashion and they don't stay together well. And the cheaper you go, the worse it gets, okay? Anybody that's dipped a Longhorn long cut knows what I'm talking about. But Timberwolf is the same way. It's medium tier. Uh, in the medium tier, Red Seal is all right. It, it, it's all right. It, it could be better, but it's by no means as bad as one might think, considering the can's larger and you get it for about four bucks in most places. So going past brands, then you have control of the mouth. Now, this, this basically is how attuned you are to what's going on. Do you feel floaters? Is it migraine? The big thing, the, the most common thing is you get floaters when you move it to the side. If I load up front like me and then you move it to the side, it leaves a trail. All right. Or it starts spreading. Softer, sort of mushy, not real firm stuff. Timberwolf, again, would be a good example. will start spreading along the gum line. All right, really poor stuff 
uh, third tier stuff might not only spread along the gum line, it may start coming up over your molar. That can be problematic if you have it all the way around the back. So let me get this open here and I'm gonna try to take a smaller pinch. I do not, I don't wanna say condone, I do not go out of my way to take huge pinches because I don't think they're needed, all right? You want saliva flowing through the product. If you have a huge wad in your lip and saliva is unable to flow all the way through in and out, basically you have a bunch of unused tobacco sitting in the center of that doing absolutely nothing. All right. The only upside of having some of that size, if it helps you squeeze it better. But besides that, there's a lot of tobacco there that's not really even in play. So unfortunately, that's not always easy for me to take the proper size because it's stokers and let me move this notebook out of the way. That is basically what you pull out of stokers and I don't even pack cans because if I packed the can and then did this, the whole can would come out. So let me throw this in real quick and get the lid back on there. And say it, it's freaking ridiculous. It's huge. And that's a smaller one. A lot of times, I'm literally, I, I throw cheeks of this stuff in. It, it's, it's a little crazy. But luckily, it's fairly cheap, so. Okay, so. See, even there, I got stuff over here. I got a little over there. I'm going to use the forward position first. So you put the dip in up front. That's what I do. All right. But this is the easiest to show you. Most dip is going, if it starts to migrate, is going to migrate along the gum line. In the front, I've heard other channels explain this as scoop it up and throw it back on top. Dude, what, what are you doing? Tricks with cherry stems too? I <laughs> What? So, basically, I'm just bringing my tongue over and sliding. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of using the tongue to slide it back in. Okay? If it was a cheaper dip or a lot like this and it started coming over the teeth in the front, you just pack it back down. A little foamy tonight, sorry. So, the other thing is, if I move it. Now, I usually do anymore. I used to hold up front, but via this channel and having to talk, when I started doing reviews, I got used to moving it to the side, and I found that my gum up front, which is where my smaller teeth are was in better shape afterwards. So I've kept doing that. So let me move it around the side. Now it's sort of side forward. Okay. Now I moved it around the side and there's a floater right there. And it's gone. All right. Now it went around the side to keep it there in the front, you just do the same thing you did before. Slide with the tongue in between your teeth and your lip. Because it's on the side now, though, to slide from this back here, little, little, I don't want to call it more tricky, but you got to basically bring your tongue around your back molar. Now, some people can't do that. If you can't, I'm not quite sure what to tell you, okay? Keep it up front. I can, but sometimes, I, I don't know if, it, the, because your tongue's a muscle, I don't know if it's like a muscle cramp or whatnot, but I'll find that I can't. But, basically, if you can't, and you're holding forward on the side, and it starts to migrate, and you can't do anything about it, because the way your cheek ties into your jaw muscle here, 
it can only go so far. It can go if you're holding here, it can only go back to about there. All right. No, I'm not giving you a finger. So it's about control what you can deal with. But again, the the biggest thing here is having floaters is not like, oh my God, oh God, oh God. Now, okay, everybody gets them. It's just people that are more experienced don't talk about it. Don't make a big deal about it. And probably half the time don't even notice it. It's natural muscle memory to get it back in line. Okay? It's not a big deal. Okay, now look. If if you are got some situation going on, okay, where you got it all over your tongue, underneath your tongue, on the roof of your mouth, over here, well, then, then maybe, yes, you're doing something wrong. And to the point that I may have to suggest that you maybe stop dipping. Okay? <laughs> because, like, but in general, guys that are, like, new people that are like, oh, my God, it, 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 you know, I'm going to ask and read it, how to take care of this because I'm doing something. You're overthinking it. You're, you're overthinking it. Okay? It happens to everybody. The difference is you're overthinking it and talking about it happens to me but like if i'm working outside and i feel floaters i don't like a, a, a turn all the equipment off i gotta sit here and meditate now so it it can be problematic but it, it, it it's sort of a, like about mitigation you can mitigate how many floaters you have by just in use after time, naturally just getting stuff in line without even really thinking about it, which will come, and also by product selection. It's also about how you hold it in the mouth, where you put it in, you know. It'll it'll come though, but until it does, you don't need to be broadcasting that you're having this horrific problem that you can't figure out how to take care of. Because that is the only difference in this between you and me or the guy that's been dipping since the 90s or the 80s. We're all getting floaters, but you're the only one freaking out about it. And that, gentlemen, and the 5% that watch this stuff that's ladies, is that. I do hope you all are well. Do take care of yourselves. And as always, God bless.